Hi, I'm Jay Mendez Napier, and we're back to review once again One Point Perspective. Last time we were in level one, level two, we looked at our vanishing point. Here we are in level three. We're going to keep that going, but we're going to add something brand new. Let's go ahead and place a ground line. Three things we talked about in perspective. One of them is a ground line. The other one is typically our horizon line. I don't know why I said typically. It is important. And of course, last but not least, our vanishing point, which we saw in our level one, level two. Again, it depends on where and what I want to see. I'm going to keep it central. That's what most people do whenever you're learning how to draw, let's say, railroad tracks. And you're a kid, and it's really small over there, but then they get bigger as they move closer to you. It seems to be something most people do, I don't know, fifth grade? So let's go ahead and take that a little bit. Our ground line is where our buildings are going to rest. Last time we were making squares, we were looking at them from the sky. This time, I want to look at them from where I'm standing on the ground. Speaking of where I'm standing, depending on how high the horizon line is, is going to adjust my position in space. So if my horizon line is low and close to the ground line, I'm going to be at street level. The higher my horizon line goes, I'm going to be maybe second floor, third floor, much, much higher in space. Because when this takes place, again, if it has an eyeball and it can see on every corner, it's going to run to the vanishing point. Corner, can't see. Corner, can see. And because my horizon line is higher, I can see the top of whatever this is. I'm going to go ahead and make it a building. Remember last time I said parallel lines, parallel to whatever's going on in front, parallel to whatever's going on in front. It's going to hit this angle. It's going to go straight down. It's going to hit this angle. It's going to go straight across. It's going to hit that angle. It's going to go straight down. And it's going to mimic all the things that are going on in front of it. Once again, if you're following along, you should have a brand new piece of paper, a pencil that you can erase, and you don't really need a ruler. You could use a ruler, but this will go much slower. Right now, we're just trying to get the concepts down, recognize once again that these objects are on the ground line. You do not have to, obviously, place objects on the ground line. Parallel to parallel. Things can be ahead of it and behind it obviously. And once again, my position based off of my vanishing point and my horizon line probably puts me in about the second or third story of the building across the street. Parallel. And I recognize a lot of my angles are going to be a little bit off. Try not to kill me on that. And also, the elements of the ground line, they don't need to exist after a moment or two. I'm going to go ahead and put in a sidewalk instead. I'm going to get rid of that. Once again, finishing all of our angles to the vanishing point. A lot of times what will happen, talking about mistakes, is I'll go in this direction. And because I have that method in my mind, when I jump to the other side of the vanishing point, I'm like, hey, vanishing point, I'm going this way. I'll keep doing the same thing. This would be incorrect, obviously. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make sure that we recognize the importance of the vanishing point and that it kind of acts like a magnet. If there's a point here, connect the dots. 
connect the dots, even this one would go. It's going to end up hiding behind there. And we can decide how far back in space we want these to go. Or do we want them to be not very tall at all? Cool. Don't forget this one. Anyone who understands perspective is going to recognize almost immediately if there's something wrong with what you're doing. Perspective is kind of like a mathematical equation. And if it's math, it has to have an answer. And the answer is going to be pretty much always the same. So if those angles are not following the correct path, someone's going to see the littlest thing and it's going to throw off what is it you're trying to make. What am I trying to make? Maybe I'm making a door on this side. And because it's on this side, it doesn't need to follow anything as far as perspective is concerned. Maybe a window. But if I put it on this side, it must follow the rules of perspective. And it's going to go in the direction of the vanishing point. Once again, maybe this is a road. If it's a road, then it should have a crosswalk. Also goes towards the vanishing point. These angles here will not. They can stay parallel. gutters, you want to make step downs, whatever it is you're doing, no problem, it just needs to follow the vanishing point, you want to put uh, a bench here, put a bench there, once again it follows the vanishing point. Three. Here's the cool thing. Ooh, probably drawing outside of my boundaries. I am drawing outside of it. If, if you want a tree, a tree can do whatever it wants to do. A tree is organic. It is not following geometry of your space, and so it does not need to be confined to your perspective drawing, AKA whenever you draw, it's not going to run to the vanishing point. It's just going to hang out and do what it's doing. All right, cool. Level three, perspective. And of course, you can elaborate on this any way you want. If you're gonna use windows, those windows will go towards the vanishing point, no matter if they're the same size or not, this is how you make them look like they're getting smaller. Use your vanishing point. You want to go a little stereotypical? Maybe you want the sun and a couple little M birds. Hello. Everybody does some things a little like how we learned them. Cool, level three, one point perspective out of the way.